for introduction of guests. It's now time for a member's statement. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thanks, uh, Speaker. I, I rise to congratulate everyone who helped Brockville's Rotary Park crack the top 10 in the Kraft Hockeyville 2016 contest. The competition speaker has captured our city's heart. Of the 3,192 total Hockeyville nominations, a staggering 20 per cent were for Brockville. Credit for this remarkable response goes to Brockville's young professionals. Saturday night's announcement was the culmination of a goal they set since organizing a winter classic hockey weekend last weekend. And boy, Speaker, did they ever light the lamp. They've rallied our entire community using our national game to inspire people of all ages to dream big. The dream is to help the Brockville Rotary Park Revitalization Committee put a roof over our outdoor rink in downtown Brockville. I was thrilled last month to play in this year's Winter Classic against the Montreal Canadiens Old Timers. It was an incredible weekend that scored $41,000. Making Crafts Top 10 added $25,000 more, but our work is not done. We're determined to make Hockeyville's number two spot and earn another $100,000. Voting at www.khv2016.ca starts at 9 a.m. Sunday and runs through 11.59 p.m. Monday. As the saying goes, Speaker, let's vote early, let's vote often. <laughs> I'm also issuing a challenge to every area employer with a computer at their workplace. On Monday, we're sure your employees make sure that they log on and vote all day to crown Brockville as Kraft Hockeyville. This is important. We're not only building to win this competition, we're building a better and a stronger community. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Further, further member statements, the member from Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. I just want to give an update to uh, my colleagues in the House. I had the opportunity to tour southwestern Ontario last week as our party's critic for economic development, uh, infrastructure and employment. Uh, talk to the Chamber of Commerce members in Sarnia, uh, Rick Perdo, Mike, Mark Lumley, David Moody, uh, Rick, uh, and uh, newly elected uh, President and CEO Shirley De Silva. They have uh, questions around infrastructure, some basic things that the province can do to really stimulate and open up markets uh, with some uh, enhancements to uh, heavy hauling there. So I'd love the, the government to take a look at that. Met with uh, Mayor Randy Hope in Chatham. He talked about infrastructure, he talked about economic development, talked about uh, the uh, the Green Energy Act and the role that they've played in enhancing green energy projects in Chatham-Kent, as well as uh, uh, the cap-and-trade system that they have some reservations around. Went to Leamington and spoke and met with Bob Magri, who owns a, a greenhouse there, an amazing uh, facility. It, it, you know, does, plays an enormous role in uh, the economy in, in southwestern Ontario, specifically in, in uh, Leamington. They have some questions around energy. And then I went to Windsor, Speaker, toured the uh, Windsor Downtown Business Accelerator, met with Arthur Barb, uh, Barbett, who is the director. They want to know why the ministry has left southwestern Ontario out of the infrastructure or sorry the innovation corridor are we not innovative enough for this government down in southwestern ontario why don't you bring it down there's a lot of great things Order. a lot of jobs being created there a lot of partnerships uh stimulating innovating and partnering with uh, small businesses i'd love the government to take thank a you. look at that a second look thank you very much thank you. <laughs> member, the member from kitchener center thank you mr speaker i'd like to share with you in the house stop the to all members, you've got somebody that wants to make an announcement. Thank you. Kitchener Center. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to share with you and members of this House news of several events that have taken place in Waterloo Region in support of refugees displaced by the Syrian conflict who have now settled in my community. Wow. This past weekend, a benefit concert called Music of the Heart and Home was a huge success. As you know, Canada has reached its goal of welcoming 25,000 private and government-sponsored refugees from the Syrian conflict to our nation. Here here in Ontario, our goal is to settle up to 12,000 of those refugees. Kitchener is not the largest centre in Ontario earmarked as a settlement location, but we were selected because we're good at this kind of thing. We have people there with big hearts who are willing to open up their wallets to help those in need. Reception House is the lead agency in my community. I've met with the coordinators there and can report to you that they are doing a fantastic job of welcoming these newcomers, helping them to find homes, getting their kids into schools, and assisting them to adjust to life in Canada. 
To date, there are almost 1,000 refugees from this conflict who have moved to Kitchener-Waterloo. A week ago, I had the opportunity to attend a Syrian women's potluck dinner. The food was delicious, and although there was a language barrier, we managed to connect using gestures and smiles. Mr. Speaker, while we hear some political voices say they want to build walls, here in Ontario, I'm proud that we are building bridges to welcome people who are going to make Ontario a better place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Prince Edward Hastings. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just over a week ago, an environmental review tribunal set up by the Liberal government denied approval to a wind turbine installation in Prince surprise, Edward County surprise. because it was caused irreversible harm to the local ecosystem. A hearing to see if the harm can be lessened is yet to occur. But that hasn't stopped the German-owned company behind the project. They've informed locals that they intend to start clearing trees next week, regardless of what the government's environmental experts have said. Why won't the government defend the environmental review process taxpayers have paid for and direct the company that no work be started until it's actually got approval from the ERT? The government's allowing WPD to ignore environmental approvals in a way that it would sue any other company for. Environmental experts, including those at the MNR, have said this project will cause irreversible harm to several species at risk. Why is it, Speaker, that we have yet another Liberal program where the rules only ap apply to the people the government wants them to apply to? The people of Prince Edward County deserve to know if the Premier will enforce the ruling of her government's own environmental experts, or will she admit that if you're a company this government likes, the rules don't really apply to you. Residents have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for their legal fees. They've defeated two projects at the ERT system. I'm calling on the government to stay any construction on the South Shore and stand with the people of Prince Edward County. The law is the law, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, members from Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this morning I held a media conference to present Jonathan's Law. Jonathan's Law will make it possible for an employee whose child has died to have an unpaid leave of absence for up to 52 weeks. Currently, parents are entitled to a leave while a child is critically ill or if a child dies as a result of a crime. But when a child dies as a result of illness or accident, the parent is supposed to be ready to go back to work after 10 days. The bill is named Jonathan's Law in tribute to Jonathan Letow, who died in 2014 of cancer. He was 16. Jonathan's father, Vince Letow, his mother, Espy Letow, were part of the media conference this morning, and they spearheaded the work to pull together this bill. I want to thank Jonathan Miles and Megan Ferris Miles, also bereaved parents of their very young son, and thank Carolyn Baltaz, from the, who was the chair of the bereaved families of Ontario. Thank all of them for the work they did to do the background research, pull together the law, and show great courage and composure when presenting this to the media this morning. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Newmark and Aurora. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted to stand in the House today uh, to first uh, wish everybody a happy International Women's Day and to highlight another great event that took place in my riding of Newmarket Aurora. Last night at the Newmarket Senior Meeting Place, I had the privilege of recognizing 12 women and girls from across the riding as part of the Leading Women, Leading Girls Building Communities Recognition Program. The night was filled with testimonials from people that nominated the recipients, music from our young local talent, and good cheer. This program recognizes women and girls uh, whose leadership and initiative inspire and motivate the lives of girls and women in our communities. These incredible recipients inspire everyone they meet. They're positive role models to not just women and girls, but men and boys in the community as well. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and congratulate the eight women and four girls from Newmarket Aurora who received this award last night, Beverly Varco, Robin Taylor Smith, Nancy Black, Jennifer Copley, Lexi Benlolo, Amanda Benlolo, Sanam Juliet uh, Mojani, Cheryl Fraser, Leanne Shinovo, Melanie Bell, uh, Manon uh, Lebercu, and Vivian Risi. Thank you to each and every one of you for your time and dedication to making our community of Newmarket Aurora a better place 
You truly are an inspiration to us all. And Mr. Speaker, I'd also like to thank uh, Deborah Scott, the President and CEO of the Newmarket Chamber of Commerce, for her fantastic MCing job last night. I look forward to an event next year that's even bigger and better. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I am proud to recognize the accomplishments of Huron County's economic development strategy. Over the past year, these initiatives have helped strengthen the economic and collaborative partnerships in my community. Last spring, the Huron County Economic Development Board and Huron County Council partnered to support a countywide strategic planning process, one of a kind. Since then, 10 municipal partners in Huron County have helped identify economic development opportunities and have introduced priorities, goals and activities in a consistent and coordinated manner. This collaborative approach has brought together municipal stakeholders with community organizers and officials from the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs have done a tremendous job facilitating the whole initiative. You're welcome. These partners have worked tirelessly to help develop relationships of trust and support, foster leadership, streamline economic development and explore ideas for collective impact. This strategy has already gained attention from industry leaders and other Ontario municipalities. At the Ogre of Roma conference, for instance, the local Huron officials enjoyed a packed house during their hour-long panel on countywide economic development strategy. More recently, the board updated Huron County about their progress and upcoming initiatives over a breakfast meeting. The breakfast featured guest speaker Lori Guthrie, an economic development specialist from New Brunswick, who spoke Brunswick. about funding a global network to attract business in the region. Huron's economic development initiatives will help communities grow into a stronger and more economically collaborative place to live and do business and call home. Here, Thank here. you very much, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Ottawa, Merci, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In honoring two female MPPs, and today, on the UN International Day of Women, I want to recognize these important legislators, Ray Lecoq and Agnes McPhail. Many of you know Agnes McPhail. She was the first female member of parliament and one of the first female members of provincial parliament in Ontario, elected in 1943, along with another colleague, Ray Lecoq. Ray was elected in 1943, and during her tenure, she made significant contribution to women's equality and the environment. As the MPP for Breakin' Dale, she passionately argued for equal pay for equal work. She advocated that women at home should be paid for their work in the house. She also predicted that after the war, women that have been working would not want to return to their pre-war roles and argued that they would be able to continue their work. Ray was also a person ahead of her time, and during her two years in this chamber, she was outspoken on the issues of air pollution and forestry. Agnes McPhail was a tireless champion of the working class farmers and women. Elected in 1943, she lost in 1945, but was re-elected in 1948. Her tremendous career was capped off with the passage of Ontario's first equal pay legislation in 1951. Mr. Speaker, I want to conclude by saying that I hope we can soon honour these two remarkable women with a permanent presence on the ground of the legislature. Merci. Thank you. For the member statement. Thank you. Blake Short. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was delighted to recently announce with Learning Disabilities Association of Ontario President and C CEO Lawrence Barnes that LDAO has received a $75,000 seed grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation. This was exciting news for this wonderful organization as the funds will be used to support their pilot LD at Home, a new web support service designed to assist Ontarians living with learning disabilities. The service will follow the model already available to support educators at www.ldap.ca. The use of online delivery means that Ontarians won't be geographically isolated from tools to help increase their success in living with a learning disability. Funds from the grant will be used to help with some staffing costs, website design and development, video production and hosting fees for the website. LD at Home will provide that necessary link to the great programs that various chapters of the Learning Disabilities Association of Ontario offer to support both parents and students in navigating the challenges that they face. 
LDAO is a registered charity dedicated to improving the lives of children, youth and adults with learning disabilities. They offer many resources, services, information, venues and products to de designed to help people with learning disabilities and ADHD, as well as parents, teachers and other professionals. I'm very happy to have LDAO uh, in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, and I'm also excited that their new LD at Home website will offer invaluable insight and supports to marginalized youth and adults, as well as the families and friends who support them. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements.